I'm Cedric Laurent. I'm the executive director of Son Tus Datos, uh, a civil association based in Mexico City, in Mexico. We work on privacy and data protection issues mostly, uh, public advocacy, strategic litigation, research, investigation, publications, and so forth. We reveal that there is a black market of um, espionage, enabling all kind of individuals to get access for a couple of thousand dollars to the, the content of communications of other people in real time. Santos Datos is also publishing on March 8th uh, a report revealing a, a case of a data breach of uh, an IT company and one of Mexico's uh, biggest bank. We're mostly interested in revealing uh, to the public the fact that that company was most probably aware of that breach, the bank also, and uh, violated the law by not uh, by not notifying that breach to all the all the, the, the potential victims. The government has uh, uh, in the past spied on activists um, in an illegal way. There is no clear legal framework uh, that establishes in which instances they are able to spy or they're not able to spy and they've used this uh, lack of certainty and lack of clarity in the law to indeed spy on activists. There was a recent case in February of uh, this year, 2017, in which three consumer protection advocates, um, two activists and one researcher from uh, a government institution who have indeed been targeted by um, software, uh, zero-day vulnerability software. Citizen Lab, an NGO based in Canada, has indeed um, investigated the case and determined that the, um, the threatening uh, message, text messages that those three activists received were indeed um, made by uh, the NSA group, an Israeli company, using a software that's called Pegasus. This is why we use uh, all kinds of uh, uh, preventive measures to encrypt our email, to store them uh, safely, um, and to impose it on all of the people who work with us at our organization and uh, from other organizations too. I've used since uh, the, the start of uh, uh, founding the NGO, uh, Santos Datos, at the end of 2012, um, uh, GPG software to encrypt and authenticate all the email communications among our staff and uh, with our board members and with uh, as many activists as possible. Most of the people we work with are indeed um, aware of the importance of using such tools. If it is a funder or if it is um, a board member, someone who's not directly involved in the day-to-day -day operations of our organization, it's more difficult. If it's a journalist, yes, the, the, most, the most reputable journalists invest, working on investigations in Mexico, who I'm working with, um, are indeed using uh, GPG. I'm pretty cognizant of the fact that authentication as a part of the GPG tool is very useful. In one instance, I, was, I learned that a big um, international privacy organization had received various um, advanced position threat type emails in which the, the sender was supposedly someone from the same organizations. So in this case, they were not using authenticated emails. And I think one of their staff or several members of their staff did click on the email, thinking that it indeed came from um, that staff member. Well, I received between 10 and 30, 40 um, phishing type or malware type emails every day. 
So I'm very much aware of it. In uh, two or three instances, it was so well done that I did forward the email to um, more technical uh, colleagues, an engineer and malware specialist. Um, so it is definitely something that's on the back of my mind all the time, even when receiving um, small text messages. If we, we weren't aware of the possibility of um, getting a software like the NSO Group software um, targeting and taking complete control of your mobile phone only through clicking one email, I think we might have fallen for it. Some of the work I do would be made very difficult if I weren't able to use encryption tools uh, like GPG. Um, when sending information to journalists about a case, I would worry uh, whether the mailbox of the journalists could be compromised, what it would happen if it were. So I'm, um, I would have to meet them face to face, personally. Um, I would have to only have um, personal conversations with uh, colleagues, uh, members of my staff, which would make things much more complicated.